Good evening. My name is Stephen Trumper. With me is my awesome daughter, Hannah. For the past four years, I've written the back page column in Abilities Magazine. I titled it Lost and Found because too often stories of disability and aging focus far too much on loss. But from my perspective, as a lifelong disabled person and a longtime magazine editor and teacher, what is far more compelling, engaging, and utterly human is what follows loss. What do we discover about life? What do we find in ourselves? In each column, I grapple with these questions, and tonight, sticking to the theme of mobility, mobility, I would like to read you one of my recent columns. I called it The Walk of Life, and gave it the following subtitle, Figuring Out Stuff I Have Discovered is one of the joys of disability. The doctor was ready with her prescription. She had been worried about my gait. She had asked me to do what I call the rehab catwalk, a promenade I had done dozens of times in sight of other doctors, each one staring intently as I limp lurched before them. I did these walkabouts, clad only in my underwear, the better to examine how I moved hips, legs, feet. The received wisdom on this day, I should wear a three-inch lift on my right shoe. This would mean, the doctor explained, that I could better swing my left leg and foot through to a full stride. The complication, I would have to ditch my comfy sneakers and replace them with heavy leather boots. Only they, apparently, could prevent teetering and give me the necessary stability. I was not convinced. The next day I was on the phone. I knew track athletes wore custom-made sneakers. Who customized them? After a few more phone calls, I was in touch with one of these higher tech cobblers and within a few weeks, I had them. Bright white Nikes, one majestically elevated. <laughs> it had been so, it had been a long time since I felt so fleet of foot. The shoes were lightweight, modern, still sturdy, but far removed from the ponderous boots they used to anchor metal leg braces during the height of the polio epidemic. These new sneakers were marvelous. I felt like dancing. I could do the swoosh. <laughs> this little story of uplift highlights a few fundamentals about living with disability. There always seem to be moments when you're in your underwear being judged. <laughs> there always seems to be time when you feel more than just a little violated. Your personal privacy and dignity casually discarded. And there always seem to be well-meaning suggestions that fall short of how you want to live your life. There is a process to living with disability. Somehow, you learn your best way to absorb most days all the frustrations, disappointments, and discrimination that make your life more difficult than it needs to be. What does help a great deal, as my father would often say, is to use your noggin. Figuring out stuff I've discovered is one of the joys of disability. 
My father made his living as an advertising writer. My mother was a teacher. Both had a strong interest in the arts. So I was raised in a house built on creativity and ingenuity. Though I've had many moments of pure pleasure in figuring out stuff in my various work, workplaces, nothing has ever thrilled me more than figuring out disability stuff. I'm equally thrilled when people close to me join the effort. I remember my father when I was nine and obsessed with playing Crazy Eights. He would want to figure out a better way for a kid with the use of only one arm and hand to hold and play the cards instead of just a messy pile in front of him that he has to continually curl up and peek at. The solution came to him when we were visiting my great aunt Mary. She was in mid shuffle when my father said, I have an idea. Then he went out to my great uncle Frank's workshop. About a half hour later, dad was back beaming. He'd taken a piece of quarter round wood trim and with the help of two small screws, fashioned a straight flat length of wood across it, creating a holder for my cards and freeing up my arm and hand to play havoc with great Aunt Mary's gamesmanship. <laughs> there is a straight line from that makeshift card holder to my swooshing sneakers. Each little burst of inspiration before, in between and after have enriched my, enriched my life by making things easier and making me feel that I can hurdle over most obstacles in my path. Using that noggin has helped me adjust to every stage of decline in my disability. And there have been a few. Now there's a new adjustment, not with my spinal cord, but with my beloved Judy, my wife of 35 years. More than three years ago, she was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. Phenomenally assisted by daughter Hannah, I have taken on a major caregiving role. Judy, once my prime caregiver, is now in need of physical help, which I cannot possibly provide. But our daughter can, as can BSWs, as well as friends and family. We are finding our way, slowly, surely, through tears and laughter, as we get used to ever-changing conditions, thinking through each step along the way, finding our new stride. Thank you. Thank you.